When you first look at the two couples, the Waleses and the Sussexes, they might look similar if you didn't know any better. Prince William and Prince Harry, both princes, both have beautiful wives. Well, one has a beautiful wife, one just has a wife who thinks she's beautiful, but anyway. Both men claim to absolutely adore their spouses, and the wives say the same about them. But if you look a little closer, these relationships couldn't be more different. First, let's look at the healthy relationship. I'm talking about the one between William and Catherine, the Prince and Princess of Wales. William and Catherine first met back in 2001 when they were both university students. They were both studying history. And they didn't even get married until 2011 because William insisted that they take their time. They tried to keep their relationship low-key. They didn't want to get a bunch of attention from the media, and who could blame them? I mean, they were young, they were in love, and they wanted to take things slow. They wanted to really get to know each other. In 2007, they even famously broke up for a little while. I guess they had grown apart, and so they thought maybe they needed some time apart. Well, of course, in the end, they just couldn't forget each other. They couldn't stay away, so they got back together. And I don't know about you, but I am so happy they did get back together, because just look at them now. Ever since they tied the knot in 2011, it truly has been a fairy tale romance. Whenever you see them together, they look absolutely smitten with each other. With them, you can see it's not a performance. I mean, the way they interact shows that they really do love and appreciate and respect one another. And there is a lovely article right now in the Daily Mail with the headline, Gentlemanly Does It, From Rock Climbing to High Heel Disasters, Discreet William Always Has Kate's Back and Ensures Their Royal Visits Go Off Without a Hitch. With William and Catherine, it's really the little things that make us go, aww. So apparently, earlier this month, when they were in Birmingham to mark World Mental Health Day, the cameras panned round to pick out William applauding warmly in the audience while Catherine was giving a speech. And there was something else, too. According to the article, with a minimum of fuss, William moved Kate's chair just enough to let her sit back down with ease. With that small gesture, William really shows that he's thinking about Catherine. He's considerate of her. It's not all about him and what his wife can do for him. Instead, he truly loves her as an individual. That is exactly what being a gentleman is all about, caring more about someone else's comfort than your own. They included some other really lovely examples, too. Talking about the Platinum Jubilee in 2022, quote, As they left the event, the couple could be seen descending a staircase of cobbled steps, with the Prince 41 reaching up to help Kate 42 in her silver Jimmy Choo heels as they walked side by side. Again, I know it's a small gesture, but still, it is these small gestures that make a healthy relationship. It's the little things people do when they think nobody's watching that can really tell you whether or not a couple is truly in love. There was also an occasion in March of 2013 when Catherine got her four-inch stiletto wedged in a drain during the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And who helped her? Well, of course, her doting husband, Prince William. His arm was there for her to hold on to as she managed to pry it free, and then off they went together. And it's not like these are isolated incidents. This is what we see from them all the time. If it's raining, William is going to hold an umbrella for Catherine. They went rock climbing, and he was the first to have a go, quote, with his wife holding his rope. Are you holding me? He shouted up. I've got you, she laughed. I mean, friends, if this is not a true fairy tale romance, I don't know what is. And when we look at this beautiful relationship, it really makes Meghan and Harry's look all the more pathetic. I mean, the two of them pretend to be so in love with each other. But let's look at what the evidence shows. First of all, their relationship was not built upon a solid foundation like the Waleses. Meghan and Harry met supposedly in early 2016, and then their relationship became public in October of 2016 thanks to Meghan. Even Harry has said that their relationship went from, quote, zero to 60. That is such a red flag, but that's exactly what narcissists do. Once they've got somebody, they love bomb them, and yes, the relationship goes from zero to 60 in a matter of seconds. So the public first learned about their relationship in October of 2016, and then by November of 2017, they were already officially engaged in doing the engagement interview. Megan claims that their relationship was not a whirlwind romance. She insists that they had a good five or six months of complete privacy before the public found out. 
Well, that tells us all we need to know about her past relationships if she believes that five or six months is a significant period of time in a romantic relationship. And of course, there are so many rumors as to why the two of them got engaged in the first place. We do know that I think it was in May of 2017, before they got engaged, Harry's good friend Tom Inskip got married and Meghan crashed the wedding. She was not invited. She was not his plus one. Why did she crash the wedding? Well, some say it was because she was stalking him. There are also rumors aplenty that Meghan lied about being pregnant in order to make Harry marry her. And these are rumors that I'm not going to discount. It would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? There were some things that people overheard. Apparently, Harry at one point was shouting at Meghan, are you pregnant or not? Whether or not there was a pregnancy claim involved, they rushed into marriage. That much is obvious. Even though William warned Harry that he really should take his time and get to know Meghan more, of course, Harry ignored his brother's advice and he rushed into it. They got married in 2018. They do their best to convince everybody that they are so deeply in love, but that is not what their body language shows. We've talked a lot about how Meghan grabs onto Harry's hand and leads him around like he's a small child, but Harry's no saint either. There's a report that just came out in the mirror about something that happened quite a long time ago, an event where, allegedly, Harry almost made Meghan cry. We've also talked about how Meghan always has to push in front of Harry so that she can be the first person to greet anybody. And we saw exactly that happen again when they were in New York last week. So, body language experts, according to the mirror, were quick to analyze the pair, and one even told the mirror that Megan had, quote, made her husband look awkward with a failed gesture when a man leaned in to shake Harry's hand, but Megan stepped forward to embrace him instead. I don't know if you have seen the video, but I know exactly what they're talking about, and that's exactly what happened. So Harry ended up looking like more of a fool than usual. He had to act like he was scratching his nose or something. It was a very cringy and uncomfortable moment, even just to watch. So that little incident has reminded people of something that happened back in 2019 at Trooping the Color. According to the mirror, when they were all standing on the Buckingham Palace balcony, Harry and Meghan had some kind of disagreement, and people said that it looked like Meghan was about to cry. On Twitter, a fan wrote, She eventually turned around and looked like she was going to start crying. The balcony seemed rather chilly, if you ask me. And then another person compared them to William and Catherine, saying, Look at the difference. How relaxed are Kate and William? And at the time, the royal commentator Richard Fitzwilliams weighed in. He told Insider, One of the important characteristics of being royal is to ensure that public appearances go off smoothly. In this instance, it certainly seems there was an unhappy exchange. Let us hope it was not symptomatic of anything other than a misunderstanding. But the Buckingham Palace balcony is not the place to draw attention to such things. If the two of them cannot even hold it together while they're on the Buckingham Palace balcony and pretend to actually like each other, what does that say about how things are behind closed doors? And we've heard all the rumors that they get into some really nasty, loud fights. I absolutely believe those rumors. And according to the body language expert Judy James, also in the mirror, that scene where Megan did the mock curtsy in their Netflix docuseries did make Harry feel uncomfortable. And when you look at his face, you can see it. Speaking to the mirror, Judy James said, Megan does an extravagant mock curtsy that does, as she says, look medieval. It takes her eight seconds to perform, making it a long joke, but there is no change in Harry's more serious facial expression until the end, when he lets out a small, mirthless laugh. As Megan mentions Your Majesty, the direct reference to the late queen, it does seem a small step too far for Harry, who quickly drops his head down to perform a cut-off ritual that partially hides his face, suggesting some discomfort at this point. Well, I should hope there was some discomfort. I should hope there was a lot of discomfort. Of course, we don't know if Harry gave Meghan the telling off that she deserved, but at least maybe he realized how inappropriate that was. In light of all this information, I think what becomes very clear to me is that Harry's biggest problem in life really is that he is so incredibly jealous of what his brother has. I mean, I understand it. William has a beautiful, intelligent, classy wife who truly is his equal. Harry, on the other hand, has a narcissistic witch who is sucking all the life out of him. 
and you. What do you think about the two couples? Please let me know your opinion below in the comments section. Before you go, don't forget to like and share my video with anybody else who would enjoy it. And also, don't forget to subscribe to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in, have a lovely day, and I'll be back to see you in the next videos.